Hey there, friend, and welcome to another episode of someone reviewing The Bachelorette that has never seen The Bachelorette. That's right, I've never seen The Bachelorette, and this week we are on week six, I believe. I am joined today by my guest, Japan. Yes, I am the country of Japan. Once I'm again, no, you're not. Nope. Well, it's, yes, nope. I am. No. I will be putting... Hear about this. Oh my god. Apparently they're the country of Japan, so I will be putting their at in my title as well as my description. For anyone new here, my name is Scar. My pronouns are they, them. Alright, let's just jump into it. So, at the start of this episode, we were told that next week is going to be Hometowns, which I've never seen the show, so I didn't know what Hometowns was. However, I kind of put it together that they would be going to see the boys' hometowns, and I was correct. So, we're going to be meeting the family next week, the families of only four of the boys. Only four boys are getting through, so we're down to the wire at this point. I feel like the pressure is definitely there for Jen, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, because, I mean, you can't you can't mess up here, because I think, like, going to the final six, they're all pretty solid, you know, of, like, people that she likes, at least, you know? So, like, it, it's not like she has, like, any easy takeout or something. Yeah, I think it's seven, right? Don't we have seven points? Yeah, maybe there's seven. I can't, I can't hey, You're remember. good. You're all good. Um, so the episode kind of starts with her talking to the Bachelorette from the last season. Kind of like a little advice thing. I don't know if this is common in the Bachelorette, Will they bring where they bring back old Bachelorettes, but we saw quite Pretty a few. Sure. Okay, that makes sense. You know, I, I guess it's like... I don't know, a way for them to probably generate more people coming back every week, too, to be like, oh, this is the person from last season or whatever. But anyway, we are there. She's talking and she ends up talking about Sam and how with Sam, she's she feels like there's something there, but they don't have that emotional connection like she does with the other boys and we're gonna see how that plays out more in a little bit we'll get to that we'll get to that anyway we get out of new zealand we're actually in seattle we're back in the states we're back home and they're in seattle which is super dope and we see a date card it's date card time and they come in and the person that gets the one-on-one -on -one, it's a one-on-one -on -one date and it's marcus so he's going to be having a one-on-one -on -one date with jen he also receives a letterman jacket now we both <laughs> were a little confused by this i don't know if there was well he does go to a stadium later which is what you thought that was but it's a baseball stadium though it's yeah. the wrong sport for a lot of I mean, I guess there is Letterman baseball, but it's it's not college or anything. Like that's it's a pro team. There's no Letterman jacket. Yeah. It was a little weird. We we didn't understand. They never really explained it. They just kind of gave it to him and it felt a little it just felt a little out of left field ah, to yeah, both yeah. of us. Baseball. Oh my god. Anyway, we're moving on cuz <laughs> you're a dork. You're a dork. You know what made the joke? I didn't. I didn't make a joke. I was just saying you made it into the joke. Anyway, you're a dork. Anyway, next up. <laughs> um, so kind of a big part of the episode is a huge advertisement for the movie Wicked, which was a play um, years ago. And a book before that? Yeah, it's all based off of um, The Wizard of Oz, right? Well, I mean, like, they have they had Wicked the book, I think, too. I think that's oh. what started it all. But isn't it from The Wizard of Oz, or am I yeah, cracking out? It's okay. to The Wizard of Oz. Okay, I thought so. I th I've never seen any of it, but I kind of really want to after the advertisement, so I guess the advertising worked, I guess we yeah. could say. Um, but anyway, that's kind of what we're seeing here, is this huge advertisement for Wicked, and the date with Marcus and Jen starts. They're at these huge curtains in the middle of the street, and they open up the curtains and we see two bachelorettes from Jen's season. We see Daisy and Kelsey. And they seemed to all be pretty good, pretty friendly, which I thought was kind of cute. I like that. I wondered about this. I wondered if the on the show, like if the bachelors or bachelorettes end up kind of becoming friends. And I really like the idea that they do. It, it's cute. Yeah, definitely. Never seen these two before, but 
seems like <laughs> I've never seen it okay anyway there's a yellow brick road kind of more of an advertisement for wicked and they have this game that they're going to be going on this yellow brick road and having to make choices so they come to the first set of boxes so they have these boxes and they they're labeled and they say choose spicy or sweet and they end up choosing spicy and they have to eat these spicy peppers and they end up kissing it's a cute little moment and they get the, to the next box it's scream or whisper and they choose scream and they have to scream their feelings for each other and they scream i like you um so that was you know it was kind of cute and i forget what it was playful or something else on the next boxes and they end up choosing playful and honestly i felt like this was a little awkward they have like a pillow fight in the middle of the street which i can see where it could be cute but they end up like laying in the pillows and kind of making out but it was a little all these people <laughs> yeah it was very awkward um it was a very awkward uncomfortable moment in my personal opinion um to be kind of doing what they were doing in the middle of the street like that because they were doing it not on like a closed set it was in public it was around other people and i don't know we felt like that was a little odd right yeah it was <laughs> um they come up to i think this was the last set of boxes and it was slow or fast and Jin chooses fast and marcus chooses slow at first initially and it kind of in my opinion you know Marcus is kind of talking about how slow makes sense for him because it takes some time. Jin says, oh, I've always been fast. And honestly, I feel like, to me, if the person that I was dating chose slow, obviously there has to be context behind, more context behind it. But to me, it felt like a green flag. It's someone that wants to make a decision, a calculated decision. They don't want to make a decision lightly. And did you kind of feel the same, Japan? No, absolutely. I mean, and you have to go slow because obviously if you're going fast like that too, obviously it's not worked out for her very well. So like mm -hmm. you kind of have to have a, a combination of the two. That's that's what I'm thinking. You know, I feel like Jen, all of her past relationships haven't worked out. And I know this is The Bachelorette, so things do somewhat go kind of fast but at the same time I, me personally you know i would have been okay with that they end up choosing fast together and they have to ring a bell and the two bachelorettes show up on a bike cart and they give them the bike cart to 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 drive away and they have another journey and it's discovering things that made them who they are today and they're given this like little cute wand where they use it to pop these balloons and they the first balloon they pop is it has a note and it says share your proudest moment and it's with marcus and it shows a picture of marcus and his little sister when he graduated basic and he says that his sister's is one constant honestly to me it's really sweet and cute he ends up tearing up and I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> it was just, it was kind of like heartbreaking, but a really sweet moment. And they pop another balloon and there's a letter. Actually, no, sorry. The next one was, wasn't the next one a message from his sister? Yes. Okay. Yeah. He gets like a little video message from his sister, which is really cute. And then there's one with a letter from Jin's mom and it gets her choked up. To me, I feel like they've probably been very isolated at this point and they're tired and ready to probably go home you know i feel like they've been isolated they've been filming filming and they're probably tired and emotional i imagine their filming days are really long i could be wrong but i feel like that's usually how this kind of stuff goes right? yeah it is it's, it's pretty grueling i feel like getting a, you know messages from your family is probably like really meaningful at this stage and it's really cute marcus takes a moment to comfort jen when she's crying i i don't know to me i just probably i i just like marcus a lot i think at first we were a little prejudgmental of marcus we didn't quite vibe with him but honestly um he's my number one contender personally oh yeah me too i definitely think he is 
Yeah, he's really, he, he's it. Anyway, next up, we see a ba the Bachelorette from the very first season of The Bachelorette. Her name is Trista, and kind of have more um, wicked references. She says, let your love defy gravity, and they end up going up in a hot air balloon, and they end up kissing. To me, though, I felt like the hot air balloon looked like it was ready to fall at any second. It looked weird. <laughs> It did look a little odd. I don't know if they put them on wires and didn't actually do a hot air balloon is kind of what I was thinking because the balloon looked like it could barely hold any air. Like, it looked like it was deflating to me. Um, I could be wrong, but it it, I, it just looked a little scary and I, I kind of wonder if they just had wires or something on, on the balloon. Um, but it's super romantic and it's cute and they kind of cut to the talking heads and Jen's talking about how she's scared that she's on a different level than Marcus. She's feeling like she's having trouble reaching the level that she wants to be with him because he is a little bit less vulnerable than her and she feels like that makes her hold back a little bit. And once again, I feel like Marcus, to me at least, I feel like it's less of Marcus not being vulnerable and more of him being able to communicate that he needs space and time when, like when he got hurt, right? He communicated that he wasn't in a good space and he needed space. To me, that's a red or a green flag is someone that can oh, communicate absolutely. their feelings. I understand that, yes, he does need to share with her, but I to me, a huge green flag is someone that's aware of where they're at emotionally and could communicate that. To me, that's kind of more important than anything, because those things will come with time. Those stories that need to come out will happen. But I don't know. To me, Marcus is a, a raging green flag, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially what, what compared to is, yeah. especially compared to some of the others. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, we get back to the hotel and we get another date card. And the date card is a group date and it's with Spencer, Jonathan, Sam, Devin and Grant. And then we switch back to the second half of Marcus and Jen's date. They end up going to the stadium that we mentioned earlier that we think this is where the Letterman jacket, jacket came into play. And Marcus, in a talking head, kind of mentioned that, mentions that he's scared to share about his life and where he came from because it wasn't traditional and it was really difficult. Honestly, I was crying for this portion because he does share it and it was genuinely heartbreaking. Marcus yeah. shares that he and his sister were born into a very rough situation into a bad family situation and the parents were pretty much unfit to take care of them and he says that his parents brought him and his sister to a daycare together and they just never picked them up god i want to cry again this is just so sad um and he felt like he had to take on the role of taking care of his sister and they end up in foster care and he mentions that he they bounced around to all these different foster families that felt like they were trying them on and deciding, oh, they're not good enough, they're not worth it, and they'd end up back in foster care. And, I mean, anyone would experience feeling like they're not enough at this point. You know, um, it was it was just so freaking sad. I don't know. I was definitely tearing up. I know you were feeling like sad too um oh, definitely sad. god it's heartbreaking and it i to me though it just really shows so much more depth and emotional depth for marcus and personally i hope that marcus ends up whether he ends up with jen or not i hope his life is good and fulfilling and he finds his self-worth because he deserves it no one deserves to come from a family situation like that so um, so I know I hope things work out for you, Marcus. And anyway, moving on, Marcus says that there's a huge canyon between like and love. And it's really cute. He tells Jen this and he says, I'm ready to fall into the canyon with you. So I thought that was cute. It was very cute. He ends up getting the date rose and I am elated because I'm team Marcus <laughs> at this point. I'm very happy. Um, and then they end up having like a weird little prayer. I, I thought it was kind of lame, the fireworks show. 
Yeah, I would agree. I mean, it was, you know, just so-so. It, it was just a few little name ones, but uh, that's that's just me. Um, <laughs> all right, so we get to the group date, and we are having a talk show, like a radio talk show, and it's being hosted by the OG Bachelor and Bachelorette, which are still together, which I thought was really cute. Um, oh, Jason and Molly. Wait, they must not be the first, because we saw the first one earlier. No, I'm not the first Bachelorette. Oh, oh, okay, gotcha. So this was I think the... It was the first Bachelor? I think it's just the oh, Bachelor. Oh, gotcha. That makes more sense. Wait, that makes more sense to me now. I think you're maybe, right. Maybe. I'm not 100% sure, but that's, I think that's what they were going by. Yeah, I think you're right. So it's Jason and Molly. And like I said, they're doing um, kind of like a talk show. And we get some talking heads. And Jen kind of mentioned... We're not talking heads. I believe she talks to... Sorry. She talks to Jason and Molly about Sam. I forgot. That's right. She talks to Jason and Molly about Sam and how she feels like there's sexual attraction, but not full emotional because they asked some questions about where she felt like she was out with certain people and she kept bringing up Sam and how there's this connection. And of course we get a talking... This is the talking head. We get a talking head where Sam wants to keep the main thing, the main thing, Japan. The main thing, the main thing. He's got to keep the main thing, the main thing. We, we just can't stop I was just saying this nonstop. It's, it's you ridiculous. have been saying this nonstop. Are you kidding like me? everything that we do as far as we're saying. That is such BS. You're the one that does. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you so much. Um, No, literally, this man will bring it up every single day. I will be cooking and he'll be like, you got to keep the main thing, the main thing, Scar. I'm just, I'm over it. Don't blame this on do me. Do you? Do I what? The main thing, the main <sighs> Anyway, they Bloody end up yes having. No. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> they end up having a word association game, and someone says Rose, and Spencer says me, which I thought was pretty clever. I thought that was cute. I thought that was pretty clever. And then they oh, say. Well, that part didn't work. <laughs> we'll get to that um then they say shower and grant says every day which to me he should have said bridal shower i'm just saying i'm just golden saying shower. what what did you say golden shower no of course not this is a family show japan um <laughs> they then say a fantasies does they say fantasy sweet and sam says aggressive yeah i don't know <laughs> what does that mean this is when sam's program files started getting corrupted and started failing so everything after this is just it's a hot happened. either he's on drugs dealing with withdrawal or is an npc that was misprogrammed yeah he didn't keep the main thing the main thing that's what the main issue was oh my god Anyway, they ask the boys to give three adjectives, and to me, Grant knocks that out of the park. His three for Jen are witty, charming, and intellectual. Are you kidding me? That is chef's kiss. If somebody said those things to me, I would be like, oh, okay. You know, that's exciting. And then Devin does well too. He says exhilarating, breathtaking, and spontaneous. I thought those were pretty good. Jonathan also is great. He says driven, open-minded, exciting. Like, I feel like they're all giving these excellent, excellent answers. And then we get to Sam. And Sam says, fire, strong passion. And then he goes on this um, rant and he says, I've been doing nothing but falling in love with you. Um, he's like, I didn't know if Jen would share the same love the same way. And then he does like a cheers to ferocious love and, and, or sorry, he says it was the cheers, her cheers to ferocious love that made him realize that they were on the same page. And he describes his love as reckless. So he goes on to this huge thing of talking about himself, basically. Yeah. And everybody... Um Everybody's just so uncomfortable. 
everybody's just like, what? What? Jen is confused. Everybody's just lost any shred of respect they have left for him. I mean, he didn't. He didn't go along with the game. He didn't play along with the game. He didn't answer the question right. And Jen's starting to be like, I don't think this guy's authentic. And I felt like they also cut off Spencer. Like he didn't get to say his three adjectives, and I felt really bad for Spencer. They and might have let him, and they just weren't good. They didn't add it. I'm guessing so. Um, I guess Spencer wasn't relevant, and I feel very, I mean, very bad for Spencer. We'll get to it. Yeah, um, I was just saying, it makes sense. So after all of that, they have a one-on-one -on -one talk show, like a one-on-one -on -one date kind of thing, and they end up keeping Sam. And Jen starts by asking Sam what his first impression of her was and how that impression has changed. And... Honestly, I don't, I don't know what Sam is going on about. He's like trying to say that it's an opportunity to find his wife, but then he goes on talking about himself. And honestly, this is where things got bad. He said that Jen was not his type when he showed up. He said he thought this season's bachelorette was going to be Daisy or Maria. So automatically, he's just pretty much saying that Oh, I was disappointed that it was Jen standing there. He's like, you know, obviously you're stunning. He said, but, you know, looks fade and I got to trust the process. He's like, oh, I meant, I'm meant to be here. My dream is to be a father and a husband. Talks about his parents being together for 30 years. And it's just like, doesn't really answer the question. I mean, I guess he sort of answers the question by saying <laughs> Jen's not his type. I guess, yeah, but not in the way that you'd want to answer that question. Would that not hurt your feelings? Oh, absolutely. That's like, like I'm, I couldn't tell if I was being sensitive here or not, but to me, if the person that is supposed to be marrying me sits there and tells me, well, you're not my type, but you know, it's like, so you're not attracted to me? I, I don't know. That, yeah, that, it's, it's not the good, a good look to be saying Well, that. because obviously looks aren't everything. The personality is what's important, but... I mean, just to be he told... Didn't, he didn't, like, come up and say anything. That's all he said was what he said. He didn't, like, say, Oh, well, she's not obviously like my type, but then I met her and she just... She fit everything that I knew and I needed and I didn't know I needed. She is, like, the perfect person. Something like that would have worked, but he just stopped there and just said, Yeah, yeah. she's not my type. I was hoping it would be somebody else. That will never fly. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, being... Comp like, that's the thing about growing up and being a woman is you are constantly compared to other women and for him to sit there and compare her to other women from her season was actually really upsetting and disrespectful in my opinion um then jen asks sam after being confused she says what is it about me that you want he says oh like she has selflessness and he's like i'm also self selfless and then sam says or jen asks how do you know that i'm selfless and sam's like well either you're full of, either you are or you're full of shit at the end of the day i'm just pr trusting the process and he's like i don't think someone full of shit would come in to this process and then he kind of starts saying after the first night we had a big connection it was hot and he's like oh i feel like you've kept me in the closet and sam or jen's kind of like you're not answering my questions like what are you talking about and she's like you know how can you be so sure about this engagement do you feel like you really know me and then he starts talking about his love language and how it's physical touch and then he just like grabs her and kisses her yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> it was so, there. this man could literally be given a sign that tells him what the vibe of the room is, and he would still blatantly ignore it. She, the whole time, I have autism, and I could still read that she was not interested in what he was saying, and that she was not feeling it. I had enough ability to read the room as an autistic person and and the fact that this man is that blatantly i i just feel like he is not in his right mind or something 
um she kind of is like you know get off like this is i don't know what's wrong with this man I, I just can't read the room and it's just oh i don't i don't know um it's yeah, a lot it that, it was, that was something it really was. And then we get back to the hotel and Jen kind of goes into the room of guys and she's like, hey, you know, one of these convos left me feeling unsettled. And I, she says that she wants to find the right reasons. Um, everybody knows that she's talking about Sam, but Sam is clearly oblivious. And we get the one on ones with the boys. And we get the first one with Grant, and he talks about how, which Japan and I, we feel like Grant has grown on us. We weren't a, he's, he wasn't totally someone that we liked a lot at first, but actually more and more we've liked him. And he talks about how he respects her and the way she carries herself. He says that he can see himself being with her for the rest of his life and that he already chose her and sees a future with her and that he's falling in love with her. I think it's pretty sweet and pretty cute. And then we get Jonathan's one-on-one. -on -one. Jonathan, after his date, says his feelings skyrocketed, and she tells Spencer in their one on one that she feels seen by him. And then Devin, he says he loves the thought of her coming home with him to meet his family, that he has no doubts, and he said that he's always wanted to bring a home to a girl home to his mom that he's proud of, and that Jen is someone that she he's proud of. Jen tells Devin that she's falling for him as well. And then we get to Sam, and Sam is oblivious to the fact that she was talking about him earlier in the day, and I, I don't know if Sam at this point is actively trying to sabotage himself, or I, I just don't understand what's going on with this man. I, I couldn't tell you either. It feels like, I just feel like it, it's the whole, like, maybe detoxing thing or just that he literally burned himself out trying to be that dude because it just it felt like he just completely just at one point just started dying out of everything i don't yeah it's it's like a weird like i know that he's not been good at talking the whole time and at first i thought maybe it was social anxiety um but i at this point i'm not really sure what's happening i don't know what books he's been reading to behave like this but it's not working i feel like he read a cheapy romance novel and thought oh yeah i'm gonna do the these things or something and i don't i don't know and jen kind of lets sam know that she wants to be honest and she feels like he didn't really see her today and although they have that spark they've had a spark since the start she needs more and then he's like, oh, the word I gave you today was selfless. And he's like, every other relationship I've had before didn't have the emotional support. And he's clearly panicking and he keeps clearing his throat. And then he tells her, I don't know if you're the right one, but that he's there for a reason, which I'm just like, at this point, you should know if she's the right one. Yeah. I this man is fumbling the bag. And then she asks how she fits into his life, and he says that it's a tough feeling when she asks that, and he's like, "Oh, it's just something that I feel," which isn't a good answer. And she asks, "But why me?" And then like this man is choking and clearing his throat and sweating and then he's like lets this big silence happen and then he's like i love you because i love you yeah, that, it, that, was, <laughs> uh, that was a lot man i feel like I'll the be only honest, I, I don't know what that was the only romantic experience sam has is from watching shitty romance movies or something that make no logical sense because that's just not how it works most of the time and you know she's blown away um she's just kind of caught off guard and she's like you know there's no backup to this proclamation of love that it doesn't feel real to her when he says things like this and then 
he's like, well, we skipped all those little convos and we got right to the ferocious love that he, he keeps... It's like he has a few dialogue lines like an NPC would and he just keeps regurgitating them. And she lets him know that they're not on the same page. She wants to have those feelings that they had at the start again. Um, and Sam is just not... I don't know. It, I'm just genuinely baffled by this man's behavior, personally. Um, I do notice that in a lot of the scenes, his pupils are extremely dilated. Just saying. That was yeah. a thing that I noticed. <laughs> um, then they get back to the room. Jen lets them know there's not going to be a date rose given out. Um, and Jen is feeling confused honestly especially with sam and you know sam just has no substance and then the guy as well i think it was during their one-on-one -on -one were or a different time they were letting marcus in on how shallow sam is and that yeah this guy has no substance um it's it's weird it, it's all it's all a lot Honestly, um, I don't know. I don't know what to think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm just, he's floundering. And I just don't think he's treating Jen with respect for her time or her in general. But anyway, we get to the one-on-one -on -one date and it's going to be with Jeremy, which I think is long overdue. Um, Jeremy has not been able to have that one-on-one -on -one time with Jen like the others and, you know, he's a little bit behind in all of that with her. But they end up having a really cute day. They go out into Seattle, they go to a market, and they just kind of have a really cute, fun time. Um, they go to this little florist area where Jeremy makes a really cute bouquet for her and they play these little these little cute little games and they end up getting their palms read and it's really cute however Jeremy what the hell were you doing when you touched that gum on gum alley they go into this alley <laughs> with gum all over the walls and my man just touches it and she's like is that not gross you out he's like no I'm like honey it should Okay, this is not it. Do not touch chewed up gum from people that you do not know. It just grossed me out a lot, personally. Oh, just... me too. Absolutely. I mean, that's just... I know you're trying to be funny, but man, that was nasty. No, it was disgusting. I... I genuinely disgusting. I was not feeling it. Um... After that, they go to a different part of the market. They end up trying to catch fish with each other. With each other, and honestly, it was cute. They they are very cute together. Um, Jeremy didn't give me the best impression from the start, but tonight he was a lot cuter. He was a lot. Or tonight, I guess I mean tonight's episode or this week's episode. We watched it at night, so. Um, anyway, brain, but I think. Although he rubbed me the wrong way at first, he's kind of grown on me, especially with being able to see him with Jen. We learn a little bit more about him, and it's just, I don't know, it's cute. And then he kind of asks Jen how, you know, her night was and how she was feeling, and she's like, yeah, I was confused and frustrated, and kind of is there for her, and is a listening ear for her, and Jeremy just says that she makes it easy for him to be himself. And to me, that's something that you want in a relationship, is someone that makes you feel like that. And I don't know if they have it to make it all the way, but I do think that they're cute, personally. Absolutely. I do like them a lot. Yeah, like I said, his initial wasn't my favorite, but he's growing on me. <laughs> they end up going to this, I, I guess it would be an art exhibit, it's like this glass art, which is genuinely like the stadium was so bright with marcus's day and then they switched to this very romantic lighting very beautiful place to sit with each other and have a date and i personally was like oh wow this is the kind of place where you could fall in love um and jen ends up asking jeremy you know why me and he says he wants to be with someone who makes him comfortable and who makes him 
laugh and he's like you know I'm not trying to compare you to my mom but I always wanted someone that is as caring as my mom and he mentions that he's brought two different girls to his mom and how he wants Jewish culture to be a big part of his kids identity when they have kids someday and we already knew this but Jen's Buddhist and she wants um, Buddhism to also be a really big part of their kids lives too and they talk about how they're okay with both kind of being part of their lives how there's room for both and they're okay with blending that into their life and Jeremy actually ends up getting a rose and they're going to be going to hometowns. I was actually a little, I didn't expect Jeremy to be getting a rose tonight, personally. Yeah, I didn't know. He was towards the bottom. I thought there was a good shot he wasn't going to, but. I mean, he made she, enough. She doesn't really, you know, into him. Yeah, they made it. He made enough of an impression tonight, I think. And um, I thought they were cute. I also personally feel like it must be probably really hard to not give someone a date or a rose on a solo date, though. You yeah. know, I feel like that pressure is there of like ooh, awkward. Um, but then we get to rose ceremony night and things are just unraveling. OK, Jen says that she needs to find Sam. So she's going to all the different rooms. She's looking for Sam. And she's dressed in a gorgeous dress. She's dressed in her dress for the rose ceremony. So I feel bad that she was probably getting ready. And then it was like, I we're having to come to Jesus talk. And oh boy. Hey, um. She asks how he's feeling. And he's like, oh, I'm terrified. And she says, how does he feel about the convo from you know the night before or uh the other night and he said he's sorry that he's been trying to walk a fine line of protecting his feelings and being vulnerable and he said the only way he saw it was to fall in love again not entirely sure what he meant by that um she's confused we're confused yeah and she's like what does it mean to you to love and then we get in PC answers, love is selfless, love is a sacrifice, love is understanding, it's listening to the other person that's in front of you, which is hilarious because he doesn't listen to Jen. And this was, I felt like a red flag, and he said, oh, and it means validating them in whatever way that means. To me, like, although it is important to validate your partner, validation can quickly turn into enabling them in ways that is not healthy um i don't know maybe i'm seeing it a different way but I know you're and he's like you're the only person in the world i see which to me is just weird because the night before he said he doesn't know if she's the one and you know jen's just like straight up like nothing you say feels genuine and he's like well you know communication isn't my strong suit and nothing he says can actually express his love and what he feels and then he's like, oh, when you meet my friends and family, you'll see the love, which is just, what? Yeah, that was weird. The love for who? Them? Like, of course we're going to see that. That's, we know that. Um, and she's like, what do you see in me? And he's like, oh, well, I could go on about your passion, your love, your desire for wanting a family. And he says that he's could put basically he's saying that it doesn't matter that it's Jen that a lot of people have those same characteristics and it just happens to be Jen that's at least the way I understood it yeah and he's like goes into this like oh here's my story he's like you know you stepped out of the limo and immediately you call me with your energy which contradicts the fact that he said before he stepped out of the limo and she was not what he was looking for and He's like, you know, your ferocious love appealed to me. And I, d I don't know. This man is just on and on and on. And she's like, I'm not looking for a script um, with you. And, and he just keeps bringing up the history of them dating. And just basically Sam is just, like I said, regurgitating the same things over and over. This scene goes on far longer than it should. And he's like, oh, you know, you've yearned for an endless love. And she's like, you know, what else have you learned? 
about me. And then he gets just quiet. And then he's like, oh, you have no idea how much I appreciate you. I see it now. And he says, I love you again. It's just, this is pretty much what keeps happening over and over. And she's basically like, doesn't matter that it's me. And she ends up leaving. And, you know, it cuts to the guys. The rest of the guys are like, you know, they're like Jen's energy. She's mad, but she definitely sees something there. And she ends up actually sending Sam home because she goes back in and talks more. And she's like, this is like relationships I've had in the past. You can't give me real answers. You're not genuine. And she sends him home. And... He ends up saying that she brought dull energy. Yeah, I was... That was so yeah, mean. Hard. And yeah, and then he's like, I'm going to keep the main thing the main thing. Japan, with main thing the main thing. <laughs> he's going to keep the main thing the main thing and he's going to find love. So I just wanted to tell Sham Sam to shut the yeah, frick frack snake snack up because I don't like him. And I'm glad he's gone. And I think that he needs to be gone. It was just a lot of the same thing over and over and over. And Jen did not deserve that, honestly. Um, we kind of saw it from the get-go. Um, at first, we weren't totally against Sam. But we didn't care for the fact that all they had was sexual chemistry, you know? And we hoped that he would get better. But honestly, he didn't. And... He should have been sent home long ago. He's done nothing but cause problems between the other guys. He's been annoying and rude, and he didn't care about Jen. I think he just wanted to have sex with her, but that's just me. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, we get to the rose ceremony. And the people that are on the chopping block are Grant, Devin, Spencer, and Jonathan. Japan and I took a prediction at this point. We said that we think, because there's only two roses left, we think that Grant and Devin are the ones getting roses tonight. So that was our prediction. And then we go into the rose ceremony. We see that Devin gets a rose and Jonathan gets a rose. I, we were rooting for Jonathan, but we actually didn't expect him to get a rose tonight. Yeah, I really didn't. I was hoping he would, but I would I, yeah. it did not seem like he was going to how much Grant had been around it. So. Yeah, it felt like there was more with Grant, but it was actually Jonathan staying, so I was kind of excited about that. And that means Grant, Grant and Spencer are going home, and, you know, it's kind of sad to see them this sad. And they even show a call between Spencer and his mom, and he tears up and... and you know, is obviously upset and says that he's getting sent home and he's crying and he's like, you know, I just want to find the person. I don't know why I can't. I just want to find the person. And I personally hope Spencer's the bachelor for the next season, personally. That would be a good idea. I don't know. I, I want to see him get love. God damn it, this show has sucked me in. <laughs> they got me. They got me and I'm sucked in. Dang it. I want to see people be in love. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was this episode. Um, wow. What do we what are we feeling about things? Uh, honestly, I'm just kind of looking forward to where it's going to go because at the hometown we could make or break a lot of people. I yeah. don't think there's a clear cut winner. I mean, I feel like Marcus is definitely sitting at the top, but so is Devin. Honestly, yeah. And not really should be. See, the thing of like Devin is like, I feel like he's gotten better. But like, if I was the batch, if I was Jen, and then I watch rewatch that season, I don't think I would feel comfortable after if like I ended up choosing him. Yeah, yeah, he's all gotten, the backstage stuff. He's gotten a lot better for sure. Um, I think he's, there's less people, so he doesn't have to do anything. He's already got his greasy little hands in there and ready to. You know, yeah, one thing we were saying, yeah, like, the thing about Devin is it felt more like he was playing a game, and it's been, it's been a lot to see, and I do think that he cares about Jen, but I don't think he's gone about it the right way, and yeah, I don't know, Devin has definitely gotten a lot better, and I think he's a lot better choice than some of the others, but 
Um, at least before the final four. I think the final four, you know, there's a lot of good contenders there. I'm still not sure about Jeremy because we just haven't seen enough of Jeremy. But yeah. I definitely like Marcus and Jonathan. Um, like you said, if I watched the season back and I saw the way that David, Davin? <laughs> what? David. Devin? <laughs> Davin. The way that Devin behaved, I wouldn't be a fan of that. But yeah, anyway. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't feel great. But anyway, this was this week's episode, and I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. There is so much happening. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and hanging out, and we will catch you next week for Hometowns. Bye, friends. Bye.